The voice and layer function allows you to adjust how many samples or the sample pools that are loaded for each velocity layer. We have hard, gradient, and soft. Velocities are categorized into those three layer types and we can increase or decrease the amount of layers that are installed. Just click and drag up or down. If I click up, it will increase and down, it will decrease. If I go all the way down and you see a dash, that means all of the velocity layers will be loaded. And the voice limit acts as a polyphony, so the voice limit means how many samples for that voice or that instrument or articulation can be playing at the same time. Once it hits eight, the oldest sample will be cut off. It's like polyphony on a keyboard. Now, typically I haven't needed to change these at all. I'm just using default settings, but if you want to go in and adjust them, you can. We have the humanized functions. These you can leave alone as well, but basically it will add realism to the incoming MIDI. Randomizing hits using adjacent layers, so pulling in samples from adjacent layers depending on what's available. Alternate hits, some libraries use alternate hits, right, left hits, and velocity to volume, which will try to take the incoming velocity and match it with samples that are relatively close in that volume as well. So this just adds to the realism of the Superior Drummer 3 engine. Reverse is a new effect that allows you to reverse samples. So you can get some reversed sample effects. And we can adjust the reverse time, make it quick or slow. Mute tail trigger has to do with using electronic drums and the samples, the actual mute samples of a cymbal. So instead of just cutting it off with an envelope, they've actually sampled hitting a cymbal and muting it. So you get a little bit of that after ring, even though you're choking the cymbal. We can hear that here. So that's not a manipulation using an envelope. That's an actual sample where you're hitting a symbol, muting it, and you hear that residual ring. MIDI mapping has to do with the actual mapping of the E drums. As I click on different drums, you'll see the notes and the related articulations and what they're mapped to. You can show them as numbers or as keys, and you can even bring up the MIDI mapping keys. So here you can customize your MIDI mapping. We'll talk about this in another video. So you can customize mapping very easily. You can do MIDI learn and we can go into our eDrums settings. Hi-hat CC offset. If I select the hi-hat, this has to do with electronic drums. You can adjust the response. So if your electronic hi-hat controller is not adjusting correctly, when you're opening it, you don't get an open sound or you're getting an open sound too soon, you can adjust all of the levels and the transmutation between the different articulations of the hi-hat. And lastly, we have the MIDI monitor. As I play groove, you'll see that incoming MIDI. So this just allows you to see what's happening with note off, note on. It's very helpful, especially when you get into mapping and e-drums and those kinds of functions. I'm using that with the hardware controller, but if I want to play MIDI and see what's happening there, I can select show internal MIDI, which means it'll show MIDI happening from my song track, which is very helpful as well. And that's it for this video. If you want to learn more about MIDI mapping and eDrum settings, check out the eDrum settings video in this series. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.